So getting into these and starting with the Sennheiser, I was both disappointed and elated when I heard the CX400 because I'm a real fan and advocate of how far budget audio has come, especially in the area of TWS Bluetooth earbuds. As it turns out, not yet quite far enough. From the moment I put these in my lug holes, I knew these were something special. No driver braking required, no tip change, even though the mediums they came fitted with looked a little bit on the small side. Instant audio cocaine. Elbows Guy Garvey and Shaka Getz were singing to me in the bedroom I had escaped to so as to audition these latest edition to my musical stable. Before I knew it, Theodore Shapiro's ecstasy had me in tears. Are these IP rated? I wonder. Turns out not. So perhaps not for use on the bicycle or in the rain. No sibilance, but all the energy in the Radiohead creep line so effing special. And these earbuds certainly are. Samsung adapts sound to Samsung's proprietary equalizer that measures your hearing of the frequency spectrum. So any shortcomings due to either the listener or earphone native response can be equalized out. Shows frequency response at a good level across the spectrum with mild emphasis on the lower mids and treble, a kind of double hat, which is rather than a typical V shape or a U shape or a W shape tone curve. Vocals have a natural fullness and richness and intimate voice in your ear kind of presentation. And those who prefer a more analytical sound with voices brought to the fore and isolated from the bass sounds may favour a less balanced sound signature, but for me these are breathtaking. Now the downside is that these are on the chunky side, though they're still light at 6 grams, and there's no IP rating, limiting their use in the rain or gym. To tell when they need charging, one needs to remember to press a button on the back of the case and decode the meaning of the coloured light, rather than this being immediately visible on the front after replacing the button in the case, which is something that even much cheaper buds manage to do. Now they can't do all the pure visceral bass of Hans Zimmer's White and Sirius, but these little, well, okay, maybe not little bullets, deliver some TARDIS-like magic and as good a representation as I've heard in a TWS form factor. Now I had various issues, the biggest being noticeable lag watching YouTube. I also had the touch controls working initially but then not being responded to correctly. However, both were resolved after resetting the earbuds and doing a software update via the app. Now this took 40 minutes, during which time they needed to be kept out of their case, though happily I was able to continue listening to them. Now mentioning these pattern considerations just seems churlish though. It's a bit of a cliche, but I continued to listen to music I knew very well as if it was for the first time. Suddenly every TWS I own just makes sound, whereas these beauties make music. Credit to Sennheiser then for making a more accessible version of the Momentum 2 TWS available and I hope such wonderful sound in time becomes accessible at an even more affordable price point. So moving on to the sound piece, I was initially fairly unmoved by these earbuds. It came fitted with medium silicon tips which are usually the right size for me, however with these the sound of bass and male vocals was rather thin and lacking body. Changing to the larger silicon tips significantly changed its aspect to the frequency response, as did the supplied comply foam tips, though the complies introduce a little bit of muddiness and are less convenient that one needs to squeeze the foam and then allow it to expand in the ear canal each time. Now, after a few hours use, breaking in the drivers and or psychologically getting used to the sound, these proved engaging, bringing mids forwards with bass rolled off progressively more from mid bass. Highs are present, I lack a little bit of air shimmer and sparkle, so the cymbals and shimmy shimmy yard bell Michelle's are less energetic than they should be. Vocals and female vocals in particular are very natural sounding, if not as clear as the best TWS. However, on account of the tune that misses some bass impact and some high treble energy, some of the involvement and atmosphere brought from a fuller presentation is lost. Now, Samsung Adapt Sound shows frequency response at a good level across the frequency spectrum with rolled off bass and mild emphasis on the upper mids and lower treble. Now as someone with normal hearing, they go loud enough for me with four clicks to spare my old Samsung S7. Practically they're comfortable and securely in the ear when they're rotated slightly, which also aligns the nozzles with the ear canal. So they're firing more directly down towards the ear canal and hence improving the clarity. The touch controls worked reliably, 
though some Bluetooth cutouts occurred even lying in bed with my phone down on the floor, just arm's reach away. In summary then, with a little bit of work, these reward with a sound that, while a little bit limited at the frequency extremes, is good overall and really shines with vocals, especially at the price. So folks, there you go. What do you think? Let everyone know in a comment below. And if you found this video useful, you can help others find it by liking or commenting or subscribing below. But for now, you all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.